Many projects call for wood that's thicker than an inch, but a lot of woodworkers don't have access to stock that thick. I'm Andrew Texera, I'm an American artisan, and in this shop secret, I'd like to show you the process of miter folding, so you can make your square leg out of stock that's one inch thick. So let's see how the process is done. So to make my miter folded leg, I need to rip a miter along the length of four three quarter inch thick boards. I'm not actually ripping it at 45 degrees. I'm gonna have my, I have my saw set at 45 and a half, or maybe 46. What this does, it allows the excess glue to evacuate to the interior of the leg and not the exterior. It makes it so I have less sanding and cleanup to do afterwards. I'll be using a freshly jointed edge of my boards and I'll use my magnetic feather board to keep it tight against the fence so I get a nice, smooth, clean rip. So I'm setting my fence to the width of the leg minus the thickness. This will make it so that the tip of the blade is right at the edge of the board. I'm using my magnetic feather board, pressing it gently against and locking it in place. Now I'm ready to make my cut. So I've gone ahead and cut a miter on one side of all four boards. Now I'm gonna rotate my board so the mitered side is against the fence and reset my feather board to hold it tight against the fence. When I make this cut, I'll be using a push stick. It's very important that we make sure that the hook of our push stick is over the center of the board. If it's too close to the miter or too close to the fence, it could cause it to roll as we exit our cut. So with both edges of all four boards mitered, we're ready to fold our miter together. I'm gonna to lay my boards out flat, with the tips of the miters touching, right against each other. Now I'm gonna use some packing tape to hold them together. Now that I have packing tape on my edges, I like to take a veneer roller and roll the packing tape flat. What this does is it prevents the glue from slipping out along the miter and keeps all the glue that oozes out on the interior so I don't have to sand it. Now that that's rolled, I'm gonna place some more packing tape perpendicular to the tape I just put down. This acts like a hinge. This is what's really gonna make our miter fold together nicely. I wanna place them about every 16 inches. With my packing tape down, I'm ready to fold my mitered leg together. So now I'll flip it over to expose the miters. Get rid of any dust that's in the miter, and I'll put glue in the miter. I don't have to be particular, give it a good squiggle on each miter. I do my outer miters last so that the glue doesn't make a mess. Now we'll fold the leg together. You can hear the tape popping. That's good, that, that tension is gonna keep our joint closed. So now that I have my leg folded shut, I'll use packing tape again to hold it close. Once I go around once, I want to actually tension the tape and pull it taut. 
This pressure will hold the joint closed. It's good to see the tape stretch a little bit. With my joint closed, I'll allow it to dry at least 45 minutes. So you can see you don't need access to thick stock to make the project you want to make. Once my glue dries, I'll remove the tape and sand my legs smooth. I can fill the hole with a solid block of wood if I like, or leave it open to chase wires up if I'm making a desk or a kitchen island. I'm Andrew Texera. I'm an American artisan. Thanks for watching The Shop Secret. Subscribe for more shop secrets, quick tips, and woodworking project videos. And if you found this secret helpful, don't forget to click that like button.